Hi, I am Melissa Getz, and this is going to be my reflection for the 533 class. Before I get too long-winded, I just want to say this was an amazing class. I learned so much in this class, even though it went at an insane pace. It probably would, no matter what we were asked to do or how much time we were given, it would always be insane because there's so much to learn. But I'm grateful I had this opportunity to learn the techniques and the software. Speaking of software, this whole reflection video is being done in Adobe Premiere Elements 10. I just wanted to prove that I could use 10 even though I just got the software at the end of the semester. So hopefully as I go through the sample projects and various other questions I've been asked to answer, you can see that I've learned a lot and I am very appreciative of the opportunities that I've been presented with. So some of the most important things I learned this semester. The most important things I learned this semester are the ways video can be used to communicate information. Although I am not as skilled with the techniques as I would like to be, I know enough so that I can go back and comfortably learn more about what to do and how to execute ideas I will have in the future. In addition, I'm glad I'm taking this class toward the beginning of my EdTech program so that I can be much better with the projects I will need to do in future classes. Okay, how was my teaching or thoughts about teaching impacted by what I learned or experienced this semester? Maybe the education niche I will fall in will involve video skills. I want to be involved with making interactive high school curriculum. Perhaps using video will let me make some videos and therefore help explain things to students. I imagine possibly making videos on how to solve problems and let students choose the right setups the setup versus the wrong setup. The right setup leads to the next video in the series. The wrong setup leads to a video explaining how to do the problem correctly. I think current online tutorials are only text-based and for some students seeing all the text at once can be overwhelming. I would create videos that show step-by-step -step how to solve problems. If nothing else, it would let students use two senses to acquire information. Did I, or will I, use projects, skills, or ideas from this course in my teaching or training, and if so, how? I don't know, because I'm currently unemployed. Well, technically I have two tiny, tiny part-time jobs. But nothing significant. I do not know what my future holds for me because I don't know what skills my future employer wants me to have. Probably because I have no clue who my future employer is going to be. If I end up being a live synchronous tutor as my career for the next 10 years, then I don't see how I'll be able to use video other than for when I need creative outlet for my independent ideas. I'm currently a synchronous tutor online and there this would not work with their LMS. Select at least three other projects. Oh, I'm ready to talk about the standards now. Woohoo! Actually, I'm going to talk about five projects. I started off, I was mainly just going to talk about playlist organization because that one really hit on learning strategies and learning styles in terms of domains, like the effective domain and, and, and things like that trying to come trying to create a context of a series of videos to capture students and get them to start thinking about things and analyzing things because of the content in the videos. I'm going to go as fast as I can through the standards and explain which standards I think apply. Establish a well-organized and professionally managed school media collection and to meet using YouTube was the school media collection, even though it's everybody's possible media collection. 
based on the principles of cataloging and classification of library and media center resources. And the the screenshot for the playlists may have already passed, so hopefully you could see that I have emphasized the four playlists that I created for this class. I have since created another playlist so that I could use it in another project for another class. Message design embedded within learning theories, the idea of behavioral, perceptual, effective, and effective, that's where playlists fall. It, it, they, they fall in the idea of capturing the learner based on providing interesting visual and or our aural stimulation. 1.2a, apply principles of educational psychology, communications theory, and visual literacy into the selection of media for macro and micro level design or instruction. Again, using the playlists to then promote another assignment or to promote an assignment that involves student interaction, student writing, student analysis based on what they saw in the playlist videos. Instructional strategies, uh, 1.3c, uh, analyze their selection of instructional strategies or models as influenced by the learning situation. Nature, it's again, organizing things into different playlist categories. Um, motivational strategies appropriate for the target learners, task and learning situation. Again, choosing video because it sh and choosing specific videos that should capture students and, and get their, their, them wondering why, what is this about? And, and thinking. Document specific learner characteristics which influence selection instructional strategies. Again, choosing the playlist and organizing things based on a, a specific topic. And it's, I'm, I just keep thinking about the effective domain one where we are picking topics to specifically get students to think. 2.3.4 um, use of the internet. YouTube, by definition, is using the internet, online catalogs, electric databases. It is, in its own way, an electronic database. A reference uh, learning needs. Prepare instructional materials. Um, we use the oh, 2.4.8. Instructional materials are resource lists for instructional units, other materials to support students and teachers. Thus, the playlist is a combination of videos. Alrighty, so moving on. The PowerPoint video I made was, I believe, an instructional video about uh, viruses. And I had made a similar video for the one of the lessons in another class, but I didn't plagiarize. I created a new video for this class. PowerPoint videos are always excellent, and they've been used in lots of the other assignments that I've done here and the, for what I've done in other classes. It's a 1.2b communication theory, visual literacy to the development of instructional messages specific to learning tasks because all the PowerPoints are specific to what we're trying to communicate to students. Now let's see 1.1.3 1. 1. 1. 1. Uh, authoring and producing instructional materials. By definition you take the PowerPoint, run it through Camtasia, you have a video and it's now an instructional material on YouTube for other people to use. 1.3c, analyze selection of instructional strategies, influenced by the learning situation, nature of the specific content. Again, PowerPoints are made specific to the content. 2.2.1, apply principles of visual media literacy, and production of instructional professional materials and products using, uh, using PowerPoint and Camtasia falls in there. Use appropriate video equipment, camcorders, video editing, to prepare effective instruction, Camtasia to edit things. 2.4.2, uh, develop and prepare instructional materials for various distance education delivery technologies. Creating a video is almost by definition distance education. Okay, screencasting video. It, screencasting is a term that, for whatever reason, just escaped me. Because screencasting is something that I've been doing for a while, I just never used that jargon. Screencasting is essentially videotaping what you do on the screen and communicating what you're doing on the screen to other people. I did learn about Captivate by in a different class this term and I'm going to play more with screencasting using Captivate because Captivate totally kicks because it's just it's totally amazing. Okay so screencasting I did a screencast of how to use Moodle and how to import things into Moodle that happens to be something that I, I, I enjoy learning about Moodle. I look forward to 
the opportunity to take a class where I get to use Moodle here. I did a year of classes through a, the local community college online where I just, in each class, we developed a Moodle course. So I now find them one of the mo more effective ways of communicating what to do online because it's a, it's a very organized way of doing it. So I did a lesson on Moodle for my screencasting. And it pretty much follows the same standards that I have been talking about for the other techniques. I'm looking at my notes. It looks like I have added to screencasting video the standard 2.4.7. Use appropriate software for capturing video bleh, for capturing web pages, audio wave files, and video files for developing offline presentations. Okay. Wanted to feature special techniques video because even though I didn't do the special technique I really wanted to do, I did a, I did do, I practiced, I learned two special techniques. I'd never done picture in picture before. And now I'm trying to do it for this video. And last time I used Camtasia, now I'm trying it in Adobe Premiere Elements. And special techniques are things I'm going to continue to try to learn. I want to just keep learning them. They are really awesome. And the idea of time lengthening, oh, time lengthening, I used in this video as well because I imported the picture of the, the background picture and I time lengthened that. Um, for the actual special techniques video, I shrunk the, the time frame on that. And you'll see there are several of those clips used as the background image for this press, for this video. Oh boy, I'm just going to give the numbers of the standards because it's saying the same thing over and over. 1.1.3, 1.1.3a, 1.1.3b, 1.3c. And these have to do with using instructional materials, specifically choosing what I want to use, uh, specifically choosing the software I want to use, specifically choosing the media I want to use, deciding what I want to communicate, how I want to communicate it, and who is my audience. And 2.0.1, 2.0, 2.21, 2 2.23 have to do with using, again, the proper tools to produce the video, to capture the video and produce the video. The two point area talks a lot about, well, 2.2.3 talks about the equipment. And I did buy a new video camera. I have no clue how well it's going to work for this. Computer based technologies designed to produce. 2.3, computer-based technologies designed as video audio instruction materials, 2.3.1, 2.3.2, 2.3.3, and 2.4.7. This also talks about using the internet, designing and producing digital instruction, using the appropriate software to create the eventual output. And then one of my other favorites was the interactive video lesson. And that's the type of lesson that I'm hoping I will continue to develop as I play with things is probably the one I'll probably play with the most because I love curriculum development and the interactive video lesson really caters to picking the materials you want to teach, picking the software you want to use to teach the material, picking the, the media to use to communicate that. Interactive video lessons were are pretty much the culminating part. Well, actually, this video is the culminating activity of everything. I, I am pulling together to make this video, I'm pulling together a lot of the techniques that I learned in the class. This is not an interactive video, but I do hope to use interactive videos to help communicate curriculum and to create interesting curriculum so kids are not bored to tears and aren't made to feel like idiots. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I certainly did not intend to take this long to present my ideas. I appreciate your patience. Thank you. Have a great, great winter and, and, and everything you, you do. Enjoy it. You guys are great. Thank you. Bye.